Gorilla Com going 10-8. What's up guys? Well this video is, is primarily going to be on a uh, cross band repeat function of a mobile radio. And I'm doing other stuff too. I got a new tent for the family there. Eight person Eureka Apollo something tent. Uh, it's pretty fun. And some other knickknacks. And this particular knickknack here is a, they call it the tactical antenna interoperability antenna kit uh, fancy words again the buzzwords interoperability uh, tactical you know and what happens when they do that the price goes up considerably this system here or this setup here is like nine hundred dollars I think seven hundred or nine hundred dollars and it's kinda BS in a way but hey that's what happens I could pretty much bet money that somebody ordered this by mistake and they ordered two of these so I asked if I could borrow one just so I could play with or whatever on my time my own free time and they're like yeah go ahead but pretty sure somebody ordered this and really didn't need to because it doesn't go in vehicles or nothing like that I thought this was a vehicle antenna setup but it's not it's more like a antenna farm base camp type of deal or you know remote station or whatever and we're going to use this as the uh, antenna system of the s s system that I'm going to set up now comes in this nice sort of case and you're going to recognize the shape of this once I get it all assembled so there's the various poles here and there's the center mass right here what this is is it's a disc cone antenna there's the shorter uh, poles for the skirt and here are the longer poles for the uh, what do you call it the cone it's it's meant to be taken down and put up uh, field expediently it's made out of uh, aluminum from what it looks like it's got like this uh, rubber thing so you could grab onto it and start assembling it and it just screws onto these things over here so here it is partially assembled and as you can see it's taken on the shape of a disc cone antenna and those are the sort of like the screws that you got to screw onto to attach the poles under into and it's pretty easy peasy and the rubber sort of handles here kind of gets you a pretty nice little sturdy grip on there so you could easily do tighten everything by hand without using any tools so there it is fully assembled it's a traditional disc cone antenna uh, the only difference between the uh, one of the other ones that I showcase is it doesn't have the low band lower frequency whip that would be placed on top this one here is just uh, designed to to I think from 100 megahertz or 75 megahertz up to uh, 1.3 gigahertz don't know exactly but it doesn't matter I mean like I said this thing is like $700 who, who would want to buy this why am I using this for one to just to showcase you know a different example of different equipment that the uh, public safety res first responders uses sometimes but also I'm using my ham radio here uh, this is what's inside my mo my vehicle. It's an Elinco DR635, but the make doesn't mod matter. What matter is, is the fe this particular feature that a lot of them have and a lot of them don't. It may cost you maybe an extra $50 for this particular feature, but for a prepper or for a uh, search and rescue or, you know, whatever ham organization that you may be affiliated with, this feature is very much desired if you know how to use it correctly and deploy it successfully now uh, I've done a long extensive uh, series on my portable repeater simplex portable repeater from paper to actually deploying it out in the field and I had a question in one of those videos about uh, can we put two mobiles inside an ammo can, you know, big enough ammo can and, and run it that way? And, and you know, 
and of course you could you could do that that is quite viable to, to make it into a full-fledged repeater that way or to use just a single radio like this one and have the simplex repeater or box interface with that as well but you know sometimes you gotta step it down a bit and and work with what you got and this particular mobile and it's mid-grade not the fanciest and, and not the cheapest but at least it does have that cross band repeat and what that is is this particular radio here I got it programmed with these ham frequencies and again I'm gonna repeat myself with the ham license deal that that a lot of equipment out there have all these features and it's only offered in the ham radio equipment but you cannot use that equipment unless you have a ham license if you attempt to use a ham frequency without properly licensed and with a call sign assigned and all that mm -hmm. the ham community police their ranks uh, extensively nothing gives them more of a hard-on than somebody operating illegally during peacetime of course than, than, than having somebody out there messing around with their uh, frequencies if, especially if you're not licensed they would assemble into a, like a little wolf pack and hunt you down literally by direction finding and and they or at least in my area they do practice that at least once a month they'll set out a, a little transmitter somewhere that'll transmit a, a signal low level signal once in a while and they practice honing in on that particular frequency but I digress having a ham license will give you the equipment and the authority or, or the permission to use the equipment and in that case it gives you the practice to use this equipment but anyway I digress like I said so this radio I have programmed for 144.85 on VHF and the UHF on the other side is 442.85 this radio cannot repeat onto its own band meaning uh, 144 VHF frequency to another VHF frequency 145 uh, by itself it, it, the electronics will not permit you to do that and if you did you would have a big ass duplexer like I said before and that would be more money but they do have something called crossband repeat so how you how I set that up in this particular radio is it doesn't matter which side but at, but you have to have the dual band and dual display here so you can see both frequency one frequency would have to be in VHF so 144.85 I didn't put no tones or nothing in there nothing fancy just to keep it simple on the other sub band I got a UHF frequency 442.85 uh, I may not be following some sort of band plan but it's just a simple little demonstration for the video and nobody's using these frequencies around here so that's another operational uh, detail now I got those two frequencies assigned what would happen is when I put this into repeat mode if I tr I could transmit with my handheld from inside my house into this radio here it will receive it at 442.85 when it receives it is going to repeat it back out into 144.85 with much more greater power you can set it to low power or high power but the idea is you could take this low power transmitter here you could transmit into this here which will then again whip it back out in higher power 45 watts onto whatever party that you're out there effectively cross band repeating but what you could also configure this or configure your HT to make this into somewhat of a repeater system out in the uh, in, in deployed in, in the field so my handheld I have these both these frequencies uh, program into it I'm with this I'm transmitting into it on 442.85 and I'm receiving 144.85 so I could essentially hear a kickback out of this and I chose this radio to transmit at VHF because VHF has the longest haul for the power than 
UHF. But UHF has better penetrating power uh, going into buildings and stuff, so it's more of a, ta a tactical sort of decision of what frequencies to use in, 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 that, in, in that particular order. To it now, let me put this device into repeat mode. So I gotta turn it off, and while holding the band button on this model here and turning it on at the same time, it's in repeat mode. You'll see a star and an R right next to it that would indicate that it's in repeat mode. So let me give it a quick little test. You can hear somewhat of a kickback. It's really quick, but the real test is I got a scanner inside to, to show it sort of uh, in action. So here's the scenario. I have my HT and I'm going to transmit on UHF up to the repeater, which is right up there. There's a disc cone to it right there. So that's going to receive it and repeat it back out on VHF back to me on this here. So I'm going from HT here to the repeater there, and the repeater is going to bring it right back out into the real world. And I have my scanner here set up to receive it on VHF. So let me walk back here. And there's my scanner receiving it on 144.85 of VHF frequency. So here we go. The complete cycle. Test. One, two, three, four, five. I have a repeater set up uh, with minimal gear that's already existing. This technology is already existing. So there's the basic setup and demonstration. With the gear that's already on the shelf, you could uh, get that and, and make yourself a little portable repeater, provided that you have a ham license. And then if things hit the fan, then whatever. Uh, and here's a portable demonstration of, of the setup. The 20 watt solar panel could be bumped up to 40 watts. Have yourself a regular ham uh, mobile that has the cross repeat function on it. A uh, regular battery. This is a 24 amp hour battery. And then your antenna system with some sort of uh, thing to erect it in. In this case I'm using a tripod. But you could use a single a single pole with guide wires on it or guy ropes and you don't have to have a disc cone antenna this is just a show and tell little thing that I had laying around that I thought you guys might be interested in or in seeing not purchasing I wouldn't purchase this myself uh, but you could use an amateur band dual band antenna that would be more efficient than this thing here for sure and have it as a, at a higher gain and, and that in turn will give you the most performance out there. Yeah. Real simple and you could put this inside a pelican case and have yourself a nice uh, little tactical go box there with repeater function or leave the radio in your vehicle already assembled and just use your vehicle as a portable repeater. Just drive up to the hill like that particular hill up there there's a road that goes up almost to the peak of that. Park it there and, and do your uh, operations or, or practice or whatever. And then you get the call to say, okay, operation's done, you could drive back down. Well, in this case, uh, something uh, field expedient like this little setup right here. Again, another importance of, of actually getting your ham license so you could get gear like this uh, that's already on the shelves, already configured to do just that uh, and you could always buy surplus radios and build yourself a box or or get yourself another device to kind of do the same thing in a way but not as good as this